In this video I'll be going over uh, Dynamesh and some of the new brushes inside of ZBrush 4R2. Also how to initiate the um, wax preview shader inside of uh, ZBrush 4R2. Let's start off. Here's ZBrush 4R2. There's not too many differences. In general it's quite similar to the original. Um, so if you look at this versus 4, the first things you might see is that this toolbar here, uh, the light box is no longer at the bottom, it's at the top, and that you have a lot more brushes and options inside here. For example, if I go to brush, you'll find most of the brushes you have seen in the previous version, and then some uh, extra ones they've added in here. You can click and drag back and forth to make this uh, bar smaller or larger, it's totally up to you. So let's jump right into Dynamesh, and what is Dynamesh? Uh, when you look at it, Dynamesh is basically like a Boolean operation, being able to combine several objects together, and it remeshes your object so that your general um, mesh dis wireframe dis distribution is equal across the board. So if I go here and choose any of my, uh, my meshes to start with, my recommendations do not start with something flat. It always needs a uh, slight thickness, so if you're dealing with something flat, you'll start getting holes. So I always start from a fairly thick object. If I start from the cube here, click and drag, Make sure you get in your edit mode, that's shortcut letter T. And I want to turn on polyframes so you can actually see what's going on. If I look at this right now, I can see that it's basically a, a cubified sphere. Um, I want to make sure I uh, make polymass 3D. It's still required. When I turn this on, I start sculpting. Now let's turn it to Dynamesh. It's under the geometry palette. Open that up. Click Dynamesh. This will remesh your entire object so that now you can essentially work with the Dynamesh features. So what does Dynamesh do? Based on all the tutorials and um, video previews you may have seen, it looks and appears a lot of times as uh, updating dynamically. But in actuality, that's not true. You actually have to update it yourself. So for example, if I take the snake hook tool, which you see used often, and pull on this, you can see that the mesh is still stretching a lot. In order to update your mesh, you simply hold control, use your left mouse button, click and drag out off your model, and it'll update your mesh. What those demos are showing is the artist is using it so quickly, it looks like it dynamically updates. So again, control, left mouse click, drag, and it'll update your mesh. Quite useful. So you never really run out of, uh, of um, topology when you're sculpting. The other thing to keep in mind is the resolution. Right here it's set to 128 by default. Uh, if I want more detail in my mesh, I can bring this up to a higher value. For example, make this 256. You have to do something in your model first. Control left, click drag, update, and you'll see that your mesh density is significantly higher. One thing to keep in mind is you mainly want to use Dynamesh uh, predominantly for the starting stages, not for your final mesh, because you're uh, your point count will become quite high if you're always uh, uh, updating and bringing resolution to a uh, higher value. You max out at 1024, which is really detailed, pretty high. If you want the little uh, small fine creases and dealing with pores and whatnot, it might not show up so well. So my recommendation is to sculpt, get yourself a phenomenal base mesh, um, get all the shapes and rough forms inside, and then uh, use re the retopology feature inside ZBrush to uh, essentially create new topology, project your detail right back onto it, and you should be good. For those who are concerned about bringing your models back and forth between ZBrush 4 and R2, what you need to do is export your highest version of your mesh, export your lowest version, and then you can do the whole project all feature inside ZBrush 4, and your detail will be projected back onto your, uh, your base mesh. So what else does Dynamesh Mesh do? Like I said, it allows you to remesh and essentially uh, work with Boolean features. So I'm going to hide my light box for now. If I look in here, there are several uh, insert tools, such as insert hand, ear, cylinder, cube. Let's just work with something simple like the cylinder. I can click that and drag, and it'll create itself on the surface. And notice when I create this, it'll mask out the other object. The reason for that is so if I wanted to go in, move my object, place it anywhere I want, for example, right there, and I want to rotate it or something, then it's not affecting the other object. It's already masked. So once you're done with that, if I want to combine these two, I hold Control, left click, drag, and that'll unmask everything. Control, left click, drag again, 
and now remesh and combine itself with that piece. Now you can tell by the wireframe it's become one single piece. I'm going to work now with the lower subdivision because uh, I think uh, 1024 is a bit overkill. So, now that I've done that, notice it, it added it as an additive boolean feature. What I want to do next is subtract. I'm going to create a cube. Create this, for example, right there. Actually, let me create that again. I want to hold Alt down while creating this. It makes it subtractive. Now it's placed right in the middle of this cube. If we hold Control, left click, drag, Control, left click, drag, it'll now subtract the area inside this mesh. Um, the other way to do it is making sure you're in Z sub mode to start off with, creating your object, placing it where you want, Control, Shift, click, Control, Shift, click, and there you go, you cut a hole right into the mesh. And see, it automatically updates. These are the, some of the reasons why. Um, Dynamesh is so seeked after. That was along, along with this are all the other brushes you can use with it. Uh, let's first get into how to slice this cube into uh, several pieces and move these uh, parts around. So what I'm going to do now is hold Control and Shift to get into my uh, hide and reveal mode. So if I basically Control click drag, you can hide stuff and reveal them. Um, so if I hold that down, there's different type of brushes I can choose. The clips, which you can find already inside a 4, and the new one they added, Slice Curve. The Slice Curve works very similar to the Clip Curve, where you can press Alt to add extra points and really control your uh, style. So if we go in here, I'd recommend turning off perspective when doing this. I can slice this cube right in half if I wanted to. Just hold Control, Shift, Click, Drag. And you notice where the shadow is pointed. Where that shadow is pointed, this is now the secondary piece, and this is the first piece. If I turn polyframe frame on, you can see that this is the original red one, and this is turned all yellow. For now, they're just poly groups, so I can hold Control Shift, click any of these, and I'll just show these parts. But they're not actually separate yet. If I hold Control, click, drag to update, it'll merge it back into one sol solid piece. So if you want to split this into two, hold Control Shift, click, drag, create your object. You can also Press Alt to lay down points, wherever you want, and make sure your group option is turned on underneath the geometry. To turn on group, Control click drag, and now they become two separate pieces. Now the question you might ask now is how do I move these pieces away from each other? Go to your any of your uh, transpose tools, I'm going to use move for example. If I hold Control and click on any of these sides, that side will be activated, the other side will then be masked. I can then move it wherever I want. I can add it to itself over here, skew it however I want. Control click drag, control click drag. Notice that they still haven't become one piece. The reason why that's happening is because your group is still turned on. If you want to merge them together, turn off group, control click drag, and they'll become one piece. Alright, so now you also have a lot of insert mesh features, like we were able to insert the cylinder, that's also ear, you can actually insert an ear inside, control click drag, control click drag, and it becomes one. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to create your own mesh and use that as an insert tool? To do that, it's fairly easy. We have new brushes in here now. If I go here and choose my mesh insert dot tool, or brush. I can go then go under brush, modifiers, where it says mesh insert preview, you choose the mesh you want to use. Make sure the mesh you're using is indeed a polymesh 3D. So I'm going to choose the same one I've already created, this one right here. So now when I click and drag, I'll create the exact same mesh again. I can also do the negative version holding alt while dragging it it will now subtract itself from the object. If transparency is turned on, when you're clicking and dragging, the other object will become transparent, allowing you to place it more accurately where you want. Once you're done, you always hold control click drag, control click drag. And now you have uh, your, your mesh is how you want. I'm going to use Z sub for this right now. Drag that there. 
control click drag, update, and it cuts a hole right there. So you can use your own meshes to essentially um, cut away or add to it. So if you really want to create a character creator, for example, you can create a series of arms, uh, facial features, nose, ears, hands, fingers, feet, and dynamically create your characters very quickly. Uh, it's a great way to start a base mesh and then finalize it however you want. Basically, Dynamesh Mesh has allowed us to essentially work uh, and be a lot more organic with how we work. Um, you can always change things very quickly. If someone doesn't like something, you can always hack it off and create a new one. There's also a lot of new tools I've added in here. Uh, some of the major ones are like the Curve Lathe, the Line Tube, the Curve Tri-Fill, Curve Tube, and the Curve Snap. You can also use some of these new Curve tools and experiment with them. Let's go over some of them. The Curves Lathe right here. And essentially, Lathe, by uh, clicking and dragging, and based on this curve here, it'll lathe around that curve. So wherever I end it, that's where my line is. And that's where it's going to lathe. So creating this is easy to make your little pots if you want. A little pot. Oh, well, that's a bit much, so let's really make a better pot. There we go. A little pot right there. Um, it's definitely useful. You can create some really interesting tools this way and combine them together and become one. Uh, this tool now is getting kind of messy, so I'm going to start from a new cube 3D. Make polymesh 3D. Scroll down. Turn on Dynamesh. Turn perspective on. i show you the other tools now. Curve line. Literally, you just draw lines off of the surface. So click and drag. Now you have a new tube. It's like adding a new uh, chunk of clay right inside wherever you want. You can still move them wherever you, you please. So I can click and draw one of these, move it where I want. Control click update and there you go. Also don't forget that you can turn on symmetry for these. So if I want to give two arms for example, I can press uh, X to toggle on symmetry. Rotate this at the angle I want. Make sure my uh, symmetry, there it is. Let's rotate this at the right angle. And draw two arms out right here on the side. Let's go back to the draw mode. You have two tubes on the side. You can then move where you want. Changing your side of your brush will control how thick that tube is. There we go, we have like little tubes now attached to it. Then let's go over the uh, Curve Tri-Fill. This one's a phenomenal tool. I love this one. If I go to um, Transform now, and just use a radial for example, and click and drag several of these and create multiple little shapes. Since you create your shape, think of it as like a spline tool inside Max and you're using the Extrude feature. If I want to, I can just click and alter my shape however I want by moving this brush. This only works on the original one. If I move to these other ones, notice your brush is still red. Over here it's blue, signify that I can move these pieces and alter however I want. Mm -hmm. Recommend checking this out. Very powerful. So use my move. Move them out if I want. Or in. Control click drag, update, now they're one. Very neat features they have. The next tool is the curved tube. It's similar to the line. The only difference now is that you can click and draw your shape. So if I wanted to, oh there it goes, I just freaked out. There we go, you can create that. And go back and still alter how my curve is like. Perfectly fine. This will control more of the influence of the object. You want to learn a lot more of these tools, I would recommend checking out Ryan Kingsline's video. He goes over how to use these tools and how to alter um, the silhouette of them. You can taper things off and etc. Control click drag, control click drag, and now we have one piece. The other tool is the curves to snap. 
This essentially lets you draw a curve right on top of the surface, wherever you want. So you're essentially laying clay right on top of the surface, similar to how you would use with your normal clay when you're sculpting. So for example, if you're uh, sculpting an eye, you might actually just uh, draw and paint the eyelid out with maybe a smaller brush. I'm drawing the other one. Control click drag to update everything. It becomes one piece. Then you can sculpt and soften out what you need. So I recommend checking out all these tools. Uh, it's very powerful. I hope this introduction to Dynamesh is quite useful. Um, and lastly, uh, like I had mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm going to go over how to add that wax preview. So I'm going to use the skin shade one right here and dim this down just a bit. And a lot of the videos you've noticed, a lot of the things now have this whole uh, backlight and rim light to give this whole subsurface scatter effect with the red coming through. In order to achieve that effect, you must go to Render, Render Properties, and turn on Wax Preview. By default, you're not going to see it yet. I'll also turn on the Wax Preview, the Preview Wax option down here, Strength set to 1 already. And then go to Material, Wax Modifiers, and Increase My Strength. Based on how strong this is, the more of the red I can see start bleeding through. See you here, it's already you can see some of that red, the fake subsurface scatter. It's a pretty neat trick. I like this for when they create their uh, creatures or humans and characters. That way when they're texturing it looks like there's actual subsurface scattering happening, giving them a uh, much better result. Hope this video is useful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And I'll try my best to answer you.